in Irving, Texas this weekend. Um, so I'm continuing on with our Texas AuthorCon and Book Festival interviews. And with us today, we have Carmen Norris. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah, it's great to have you on. Um, do you do a lot of events? Um, Actually, this will be my first one. So my okay. debut comes out right before the event. So okay. This is going to be my first one. So all new to me. Okay. All right. Great. Um, well, Texas AuthorCon last year was my first event as an author. Nice. Um so, and I just did Scares That Care in Williamsburg. Um, so yeah, it's fun. It'll be a great time. Merrill is a great host um, of the event. So he, he makes everybody feel welcome. Um, and I usually just wander around and talk to everybody. So I'll be stopping at your table for sure, just to say hi, at least. Um, yeah, it's a great event. And it's much bigger this year than it was last year. Um, so I don't know if you know the history, but it started off... Um, three years ago because this is the third one with 14 authors oh and then last year i think we had something like 60 authors um and then this year it's a hundred ish around so oh, wow. yeah and it's I, going so fast. yeah yeah for sure um which is great because i guess there's not a lot of events like this down in the dallas area no so yeah you'll have a great time you will for That's sure. Amazing. It's like it's like a big family, no matter what genre you write. It, it's nice. Yeah, it's always good too to be able to meet like other authors and like make friends with them. It feels like less isolated. Yep, for sure. Um, so our first question, our little icebreaker here is Jason, Freddie, or Michael? Ooh. See, I I would say Freddie. Just okay. because I love like merging the nightmares with like real life, like that mm -hmm. aspect just grabs me. So I love that. But my husband's a huge Michael fan, so I'll make him a second just so he doesn't get mad. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's great. Freddie gets a lot of traction. Um, when we first started off asking these questions, we just had Jason and Michael, and then everybody was saying Freddie. So we're like, <laughs> okay, we'll add Freddie on. <laughs> so just to give him, you know, because I think people like Freddie a lot because he has more of a personality. He actually talks. Yeah. You know, yeah. do you have a favorite nightmare movie? I don't really see. I'm more of like a screen fan okay. and I'll just kind of watch the others and I'm kind of like, okay, they're all good. But then like. I'm more into like the 90s you know what I mean like the scream I know what you did last summer like those and even those I still don't have a favor. <laughs> I'm just kind of like oh, yeah. I like this character let's see who they kill now yeah okay <laughs> um vampires or werewolves Ooh, werewolves werewolves nice nice yeah, love okay them. good answer good answer uh, do you like the wolf-like werewolves or the more human-like werewolves the human-like yeah, it they're looks more... like I'm still getting over to, but I like that kind of balance. Yeah. 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 They're more terrifying. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I'm a big Dog Soldiers fan um, and um, uh, the Howling, because you got to love the Howling, mm -hmm. you know, and those are yeah. the more human like werewolves. I think that's mm -hmm. more terrifying than like Nightmare, uh, not Nightmare, um, American Werewolf in London type. Yeah. Show. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's kind of like American Werewolf in London. They're kind of like, he's kind of cute. Kind of want to just like, want to go for a pop cup. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, do you, did you have a favorite scary movie as a kid? Oh, Chucky. Chucky. So, okay. When I was little, so my sister, I was probably like second grade at the time. So what is that like six or seven? Mm. And my sister and our cousins, they were all teenagers at the time, right? And they're like in the living room watching Chucky. And he comes on the screen, you know, he's about to stab someone. And they're like, oh, they're like freaking out and screaming. Yeah. And I went to my mom crying. Okay. and was like, they keep yelling at my friend on the TV. They're being mean to <laughs> But I had like Chucky's back. I was like, this poor little doll. <laughs> oh so, yeah i think that's where my love of horror started is taking up for chucky oh wow that's pretty funny and nobody's yeah. ever said i don't think anybody said chucky um child's play before so yeah that, that's pretty funny yeah mm -hmm. uh, looking out for chucky man nobody <laughs> don't hurt chucky 
<laughs> yeah, he's killing everyone. But don't scream at him. Yeah. Uh, now, would you say that uh, those movies are still your favorite as an adult? Um, I know it's funny. I I would say like as an adult from back then, it's probably more kind of like I guess like the ninety, like the Final Destination one would probably be my favorite. But I think Chucky is the one. That, like started it like I didn't really understand what horror was at the time yeah. I think that was just kind of one when I got back older and I got into it I was like yeah I still really like that but I don't think you know what I mean I really like loved it yet I wasn't really allowed to watch more than that at the time so <laughs> yeah a lot of a lot of uh commonality we've noticed over doing these interviews is that it's people are watching horror or reading horror um at an inappropriate age mm-hmm you know i mean i would say we turned out fine yes, <laughs> you know <laughs> um so you know it doesn't it doesn't hurt you know my parents were all under the you know when i was growing up they're like you can watch it and if you have nightmares don't watch it again yeah you know you know my parents really didn't care what we watched as long as it wasn't straight up pornography you know yeah they're like you want to watch that movie go right ahead you know <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well we'll let you mm-hmm. do you have a favorite horror novel oh horror novel um there is one and it's so funny because i can't even say but there's one that um i better read recently for somebody that's just about to come out with theirs that is now actually my favorite and it's like this slow like this kind of like slow build up but it's just so suspenseful the whole way through but after they actually announce it I can say what it is but it's now oh, okay. my favorite yeah all right when are they gonna announce it because I'm gonna want to know <laughs> um I, I want to say sometime in the next few months like they're you know they it's one of those things where they've been working on it for like years and they're like okay let me make sure it's like actually good before I put it out so then yeah. I can like blast it because I'm just absolutely obsessed I'm like I need you to just put it on Amazon get published so we can talk about this with people yeah yeah I need other people to read this so I could talk yeah. to someone yeah. about it <laughs> besides like, you secret <laughs> yeah don't you hate that it's funny because I just read um uh arc read a book and for someone and I was like I was done I was getting ready to I'm like hey when is this coming out I could have sworn you said it was coming out like at the end of March and I'm ready to like leave my review and blast about it and you know promote it for you because I absolutely loved it Um, and the author was like oh well I've decided to not self-publish it so I'm shopping it around to other authors and the agent or publishing houses and the agent said my agent actually said not to have anybody posting about it on social media and I'm like I like this movie was this book was so good I want to tell people about it now <laughs> yeah yeah worst <laughs> and I, t- I told I told I told him I'm like well it's your duty to remind me to leave my review and it, when it's actually coming out and being published <laughs> yeah <laughs> so I, I know one other person that read it as well as an arc reader so her and I were able to talk about it together it's like oh it was so good she's like yeah it was really good and I'm like I can't tell anybody <laughs> but yeah a little relief <laughs> yeah yeah I'm like I just want to tell people now if you if someone came up to you and said hey I've never read a horror book before what do you suggest I start with what would you say oh um it, it depends on what else they like. Like, I know there's, like, a lot that kind of blend the genres of, like, that kind of thriller slash horror. Because um, I feel like, you know, you could go for, like, the really dark stuff or you can kind of be like, let's ease into it just so we don't carry you away from the genre. And I would say um, Hidden Pictures, um, the one where, like, they have, like, the drawing, like, the scary drawings that the little boy does and everything in the book. Because I feel like it's, like, it has, like, that thriller, that suspense, but it also kind of has, like, that horror paranormal element. And it's, yeah. like, that way you can kind of slowly ease in there before, you know, you decide if you want to go for, like, the gore, or, like, you know, whatever else. Okay, yeah, and the hid- Hidden Pictures, that's by, I forget the author's name, it's something... Kulak, I think. R- R- Mulak, yeah. Mulak, yeah, I can never... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, have you read any classic horror books, like Dracula or Frankenstein? 
Yeah, growing up, I will say like middle school, high school, I loved um Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Okay. Like I like I did Dracula. That was like in such a vampire phase then. But then I read that one and I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah. I loved it. I have not read um, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, but that is on my list to read. I've re actually recently just started reading the classics. Um, mm -hmm. Eric and I did a, a series on it in, for our show um, where we would we read Dracula and then we watched a couple of Dracula movies and compared them to the book. And we watched Frankenstein and uh, a couple Frankenstein movies and read the book and, and did the same thing. Um, I'll have to definitely put um, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde in my higher up on my tbr which is about yeah. eight million books long <laughs> <laughs> that's all <laughs> yeah it does also i'm just gonna need to live until i'm 500 in order to read everything <laughs> simple enough <laughs> yeah 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 that's all right it's good you know it's good it could be drugs right i could be addicted right? to drugs <laughs> there are worse things in life <laughs> yeah all right so for people who don't aren't familiar with you why don't you tell us about um what genre or genres that you write in um, yeah, so I do mystery, thriller, and horror. Um, I would say, like, just because I'm starting, because I don't want to, like, you know, do too much at once, my novels, novels um, at least, like, the first several of them are going to be all thriller, and then I'm going to start, like, putting out more of, like, my horror stuff, but I kind of want people to get to know me, um, like, for one thing, and then kind of, like, move over. Um, okay. But I've written other things, like, I have a fiction podcast that I do called Bad Alibi, and I'll do, like, a mix of all three genres on there, so yep. people can get, like, little snippets of all of it. Um, yeah. That's pretty much where Yeah, I'm so I, I grabbed some, um, these two, Life at the High and The Final Message, yes. um, they, these are Kindle Bella stories. Right? Yes. And I know this one is more of a mystery um, thriller and this one is a thriller as well with some horror elements as far as mm -hmm. I read on Amazon yeah so, so these are only available on Amazon um, right now but your debut what's the name of your debut that will be out yes it's called the kidnapper's offer the kidnapper's um, offer an adult thriller uh, sorry an adult thriller okay and these are these two YA young adults uh, yeah life at the highest YA um Good Morning Murder is also YA and then everything else is adult. Okay. Yeah. Good Morning Murder. I love this. Um, I took little snippets from your website. Um, Good Morning Murder, a fiction podcast told through morning announcements of Wilkerson High. That is like the coolest thing ever. <laughs> very, you. very um, imaginative. I would never have thought to do something like that. Um. So that's pretty cool. And then your bad alibi podcast is um, mystery, horror, and thriller stories told in, in the form of letters. So that also yeah. is pretty Thank cool. You. What's that called? Apostolatory? Epistolatory? I can never say that word where you write yeah. something in like letters or journals or mm -hmm. um, stuff like that. Now, the kidnappers off offer, is that going to be just like a normal book written in prose or is it going to be written kind of like in letters or a journal or something like that yeah yeah that was just going to be like a normal like prose book yeah okay cool yeah so those are all interesting I definitely am going to have to start listening to your podcast because those are pretty interesting ideas um on how they are and I want to I want to listen to them and see see what they're what you got going on there um, yeah, all of, I'm mm -hmm. I'm all about like interesting things, you know, yeah. told different ways. Um, so yeah, that's that's gonna be fun to yeah, listen for, to. Um, the for Good Money Murderer. So I was actually I wanted to do a second podcast because I just love kind of like telling stories in that format, and I it actually came from Life at the High, and I was like, oh, how can I like tell this story in like a podcast format without other voice actors? <laughs> it's just me. <laughs> And I was like, oh, I'll do like morning announcements and tell the story that way. But then as I started writing it, it just became like its own like weird kind of wacky thing. And I was so then like the story of Life at the High just kind of became this quick little side story in the first season. And now it's just moving on and it's just morphed into its own thing now. So yeah, oh, it cool. initially came from that. But yeah. Yeah. So Wilkerson High is the high school in Life at the High. Yeah nice nice so it's kind of tied all together that's great mm -hmm. i love that 
Um, so tell me about your writing style. Are you a plotter or a pantster or a panic writer like I am? <laughs> I, I love that panic writer. <laughs> oh, so it's funny. I started off as like a heavy pantser and slowly over the years, I became like an intense plotter. It was like every time I would try to start writing something new, I was like, okay, I'm going to pants it, but then I'm just going to do like this quick little outline. Okay, now next time the outline is going to be a little bit longer from where <laughs> I went to completely pantsing to now. By the time I'm like actually writing my first draft in prose, my outline is like a zero draft. <laughs> like for every single like chapter, it has like one to two pages of like, here's what happens and here's how they feel and here's how I describe this. And here's the setting and the time. Like everything's already done. So... <laughs> Yeah, my plotting is very now. Yeah. Yeah. I know some people who are like, I've got dossiers on all my characters and, you know, maps of, you know, the whole town or wherever they're, you know, doing it. I'm like, oh no. I'm like, oh, this story's due in like three hours. I gotta guess I gotta start writing. <laughs> That's how I do it. I don't know. It works for me, right? Yeah. <laughs> Now, when you're writing, do you have to have like complete silence or do you like to have some music in the background or just background noise like the TV playing on something specific? Yeah. So if I'm like plotting, I'll have like I have like a writing playlist, which is just like all instrumentals of music okay. that way because I will get so easily distracted. And then when I'm actually just like, OK, like the plot done, like the plotting's done and I'm just focusing like on the draft. Um, then sometimes it's kind of the same or I need just like dead silence. But sometimes it's weird, but like I feel like the silence is distracting <laughs> and my mind starts wondering and then like I'll put something on in the background like really low and it just helps me focus more. Yeah, yeah, I have to have complete silence. I can't do any music or TV on or I just have to have silence. Um, yeah. And a lot of people have said instrumental music um, because if there's words, they'll get distracted, mm -hmm. you know, by the, you know, Eric once said, oh, I'll start typing out the song. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you're writing, do you strictly go right to your device, your key, your computer, your phone, whatever, or do you handwrite portions of it? So when I'm doing like all the plotting, it's handwritten in a notebook. And there have been times where I fully handwritten the first draft just because I don't know what it is, but I feel like when I write it, I like can write it at first. It just comes out of my mind better. Mm -hmm. And then I can take it from there. And sometimes like I'll dictate it back onto like the laptop and stuff. Um, but then as I'm doing, no, even, or if I'm typing it, no matter how I'm doing it, as long as it was handwritten first, it's so much better than when like I have it like on like some kind of electronic device. I don't know like why it just seems like the story improves on that second time around. <laughs> nice. So besides your um, debut that's coming out, do you already have um, thoughts or outlines or at least thoughts on what your next few books will be or your next one or two books will be? I love this question. <laughs> <laughs> so I have the debut that's coming out. I've written two other novels already oh. that's going to come out after that. Yeah, okay. I really had to make myself just go on and say, we're going to get this one done and we're going to put it out. Like, what are you waiting for? Um, so yeah, I already have the next two written. They just need to be edited. And now this past week, I just started writing the fourth one. So awesome. Definitely stop out. So I guess that'll work when I'm trying to publish. Uh, exactly. You're like, oh, you know, I really need to put something out. Well, I got this one over here. Let's just get yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just get it done. Um, so are you self-publishing or are you going through a publishing um, company? Yeah, I'm self-publishing. Um, I tried for years to do like get the thing where I like, get an agent and like hope for that. And actually that's what made me do that alibi podcast. So that was the first one. If I was like, I really want an agent and this is, you know, this is like a route you have to go, right? And I was like, you know what? I'm kind of tired of like, getting rejected or just not hearing from somebody at all and I was like man at the end of the day what I really want is just for people to be able to read the stories that I write mm -hmm. and I was like okay well how can I do that while I'm waiting for this agent to finally say yes to me 
And I was like, oh, like I'll start writing stories and I'll put them in a podcast. I'm like obsessed with listening to those. And then I was just talking to somebody in a writing group about it. And they were like, oh, so you're a self help author now. And I was like, no, I don't have a book out. And they were like, yeah, but you wrote things and you published it. So you self published something. And it was like this epiphany, like a rainbow is just like poured a pot of gold over my head. And I was like, <laughs> This was the greatest feeling ever. And then I was like, no, no agent, no publisher. Like, I love this. So then I was like, okay, I'm going to self-publish everything. And yeah. started working on, like, getting this debut edited. And I was like, nope, this year in 2024, this is when I'm going to do it. Like, and yeah, and it just kind of fell into my lap to go from, like, trying to go the trap route to going the self-help route. Nice, nice. Yeah. You get more control when you self publish. I mean, not every publisher is like, you know, we need to use this cover or we need to use, you know, you need to take out this part of the book and replace it with something along these lines or, you know, so when you self publish, you definitely get more control over when it's released and how it's released. The only thing that's bad is you're in charge of all the promo and all that stuff. Yeah. And um, that could be a little overwhelming, but, um, you know, you do what you got to do, right. To keep control. Really, yeah. <laughs> so I got a question for you. Do you ever think at some point in the future, you might take the stories from bad alibi and good morning murderer and put them into a collection? You know, I've thought about it and I always wonder, I'm like, would people read it? Or they'd be like, oh, I can just go listen to it on the podcast. See, see okay, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, I always like wonder about it and I'm like, oh, this would be like really cool. I could like add to them and everything and like make it really special. And then I'm like, oh, but what if nobody does? And I always get kind of weird about it. But yeah, I'd love to do something like that. Yeah, I think that would be really good. I think that would be cool. Um especially Good Morning Murderer, because I think it, as YA, I think it would be very popular. Um, and I would totally read it. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I would read it. That's for sure. Um, but yeah, do it. Do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to just go for it. Yeah, that would, yeah. that would be so exciting. Yeah, you know, might well. And I, you know, I'm assuming the stories that you write for those two podcasts, you still keep, right? You have yeah. them, you know, somewhere. So it's going to be easy. True. Um, so and and then if you're like in the middle of writing a big project and you're like oh well, i really want to put something out you've got all these things you can just you know yeah just like get the them. next thing's already there yeah 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 exactly so you can like keep them in your back pocket for when you really want to put something out um just go there so just because i'm great i'm i'm greedy and i want to <laughs> read your stuff so <laughs> oh, not mad at that at all <clears throat> Um, so yeah, so tell me, um, besides obviously selling books, what are you looking forward to most about attending Texas AuthorCon and Book Festival? Um, really just connecting with other authors, especially because, you know, like how we have our group chat. I'm like, oh, everybody's so nice and friendly. Like, this is like really cool. And I don't have like a lot of other like author friends that are especially ones that are like, oh, I'm publishing and I'm doing this. Like I have like most of the people I know are like, I'm working on it. I'm thinking about it. Maybe I won't. So it's nice to be around other people that are like, no, like I started and I keep putting my books out and I'm like, you know, that are kind of like, yeah, I went for it and I'm still doing it. Like nice. that would be nice to really be around. Yeah. I enjoy the, the community. Um, I'm more, you know, I'm more of the horror side. So I have a lot of horror friends. I don't have a lot of um, author friends who write different genres. Um mm. But I still, you know, I'm talking to everybody, learning about yeah. what they read, you know. Um, so it's just great to be, like you said, part of a great community and of authors. And, you know, who knows, you might run into somebody who lives close to you that you can get together for yeah. like little writing dates, you know, mm -hmm. and like, you know, cool. make it. You know, because I find myself procrastinating and if I had somebody close to me that I could be like, OK, let's set a date and we're going to go to some cafe, Starbucks or something with our laptops and just write and, you know, cheer each other on and say, you're not leaving here until you write 10 pages or whatever. Um, yeah. You know, so that would that would be good. You never know. Now, how are, far are you from uh, Richardson? Like 20 minutes. Oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah you're right there. Yeah, you're very easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right there. Um, so that's good. Yeah, I'm really, I, I love it. And I'm just, the heat is not my friend, though. 
Yeah, That's, it's so intense. Yeah, I'm not not looking for them. When I was there last year, it was like 110 degrees every day. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was just I thought I was gonna like just fry and melt away and. <laughs> Yeah, the heat makes up my allergies too. <laughs> oh like, yeah. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah. Um do you know so you've probably looked like um through the list and you've seen in the group chat that we have. Is there anybody in particular that you're looking forward to meeting that's gonna be at Texas Hathacon and Book Fest or just everybody? <laughs> everybody, um, and also David Virgitz. Virgitz? Oh. Like, yeah. Because, like, he's in, I think it's, like, the Ream Facebook group, and he'll do these posts about, like, branding and how he, like, brands, like, his Ream and, like, Patreon and all that kind of stuff. And I'm obsessed with it. And I'll be, like, asking him all those questions in there. And then I wrote him, and I was like, I realized we're both going to Texas Con, and I was kind of fangirling. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, it's going to be so cool to actually meet He is super nice. I... I, he's super nice. I met him for the first time at Texas AuthorCon last year, and then he was just at um, Scares That Care AuthorCon this mm -hmm. year in April. Um, so I got to see him there, too. He's a super nice guy. Very nice. Um, very down to earth. Him and Jay Bauer um, hang out a lot together because mm -hmm. they do yeah. a lot of writing. So, yeah, he'll be great to – he's a great guy. He's really nice. Everybody I've met is really nice, but no. but yeah, he's definitely one of the one of the nice guys that I like to say hi to and – and just hang out with for a little bit because that's what everybody will be doing is just hanging out afterwards you know I love that. Just forming connections and you know just winding down from the day because it gets a little <laughs> overwhelming I you know if you're an introvert I, I may not seem it but I am an introvert so mm -hmm. being around all these people like for hours and hours is yeah. kind of you know uh overstimulating so it's nice to just de-stress you know decompress yeah. afterwards and just chill out mm -hmm. yeah, yeah I can see that um all right so um besides coming to Texas Author Con um and Book Festival where can people find your work um really so on Spotify wherever you get your podcast that alibi but morning murder are up everywhere um and then on Kendall Bella for my serials for the final message and life at the high and then at the end of June I will have pre-orders up for the kidnappers offer and if you sign up for my newsletter um I'll be blasting out and talking all about it also TikTok Facebook and Instagram at author Carmen Norris Okay, great. Yeah, I'll have to go follow you on Instagram and TikTok um, yeah. if I'm not already. Um, so yeah, well, awesome. Thank you for joining us for this episode. Too bad Eric had to miss it. Yeah. Loser. No. <laughs> uh, um, so yeah, we'll be seeing you at Texas AuthorCon. We'll have in the description, we'll have a link to Carmen's Amazon uh, author page, um, links to her uh, podcast. Um, and you have a website too, Carmen Norris um dot miller page dot io okay yeah because i was kind of like looking and i kind of like somehow found your website so we'll have your website in the description um underneath as well and we will have a link to the texas author con and book festival eventbrite so that you can grab a ticket it is a free event but if you grab a ticket you will be able to um be entered to win some prizes so it's coming up in july we'll see you then carmen it has been so awesome talking to you thank you Thank you so much.